Let's now talk about linking and appending assets. And when I say linking and appending, essentially I mean importing assets from other Blender files into your current scene. Asset management is of course a huge and major topic for any 3D artist, whether you are a particle VFX guy, a modeler, an animator, whatever specialty you may be doing, asset management is of course vitally important. And so I wanna show you real quick how Blender handles working with assets from other scenes and how to dynamically link with other assets. So first of all, let's take that car that I used in the other scene and let's assume that I have a very intricate cityscape here or you know what have you and I want to link in my scene or I want to link in my car because I want to use it you know, I've created it in another file where I can focus exclusively on that car and now I want to bring it into this scene to then render or whatever it is that I want to do with it well there's a couple different ways you can do this the first part is that we can either link or append it into our current scene. And the way that we do this is we go to the file menu and we choose either link or append. The difference between these two is link is merely going to pull in basically a reference of that object and as a read only object such that we cannot edit it within our current scene. But anytime that we change our source file, the original car file, then that object will be updated in our new file automatically upon reloading the file. Append is essentially the same thing, except that it's the equivalent to just importing a new object where we can go in and we can then append any object from that other scene into our new scene, but we break all ties between the two. So it's just an independent object at that point. So let's first now look at linking. If we go to link, number one, linking and appending is essentially the same thing. Uh, only we then choose whether or not to keep our link option here. So in the file browser, we have uh, several different settings. We've got whether or not to use a relative path to the file, whether it's linking or appending. So if you uncheck link, then it will merely append it. We're gonna keep the link for the time being and whether or not to select it upon loading, whether to load it into the active layer, and whether or not to instance the group as a dupe group. Now we're gonna talk about that uh, in the next next video though. So I have my, my sport car here, and I'm just going to click on it. And when we click on it, because we want to pull in stuff from it, basically we see all the different types of objects and data that belong in this file. So you may remember in the previous video, I talked about the difference between objects and data in Blender. And so this is very important here, where if you want to just bring in another model from another scene, you're going to pull in an object because you want the actual object container and the mesh that that object container is using. However, if you have an existing object in your scene that you want to just replace the data with, then you're going to pull in the mesh data. And here's all the different mesh data that apply that is in that car scene or here's all the different objects that are in that car scene. And so generally, you're gonna be pulling in objects, not the data. And then we, we can also pull in actions uh, for animation. We can pull in brushes, so any sculpt or uh, texture brushes we've added. You can pull in cameras or camera data. You can pull in grease pencil strokes. You can pull in images. Uh, basically, any kind of data that can be present in a blend file, you can link or pin it in. So in this case, we're gonna choose object. And we see here, well, here's all the different objects that make up that scene. And, and this, this is not just mesh objects, this is all objects, uh, including cameras and everything. So let's just select everything. So you can either just left click and drag and select it all, or you can simply hit the A key and that will select everything. And that will then allow us to link it in. And when we link an appendix, this will take just a moment, you can see that it's highlighted in blue. And this means that it is a linked object and we are unable to edit it. You can't move it. You can't edit it in edit mode, you can't do anything. So this is a little troublesome though, because we would really like to be able to, you know, move this around. We don't wanna just have it linked in here. Now, most of the time, you know, if you don't wanna move it around, then great. You can also see that in the outliner, we can see that it has a new arrow, basically file icon to say, hey, this object is linked from another scene. Well, let's take our camera here for an example. If we wanted to then you know, use this camera as a starting point, but we want to animate it around. Well, we don't want to have to just, you know, recreate it. So what we can do is if you look at the camera here, we can just right click or uh, no, wrong one. Uh, okay, you can't do it from the outliner, I don't believe. But if you go over to the object buttons here, 
you can see that we have our camera and this is all grayed out because it's linked in. But if I just click this button here and say make local, it will then localize that object. However, when we do that, you'll notice that the data itself is still linked. And so this is where it becomes very, very valuable. Because let's just say that it's vital that all of our objects through our scene all have the exact same settings and we wanna make sure that we never mess that up. Well, by using the linked data, then that's good and we can do that very easily where then we have one master camera in some other scene, but then our camera object that's here local, we can then just do whatever we want with it. So we can go in, we can rotate it around, we can move it, you, you name, you know, whatever you wanna do, you can do. And it's the same thing with the mesh. So if we wanted to you know, modify this model, well, what we can do is we can just select all of the model. And then the way that you actually make this local, other than going through and modifying them one by one, is if you just hit, hit the L key, that will make or bring up the make local option. And we can see that we have the option to make selected objects local, as we just did with the camera, the objects and the data, so it's completely localized, or the objects, data, and materials. Because by default, the materials that apply are on this object, if there are any, which in this case, uh, we don't have any materials, but if there were any materials on this object, then those would also be linked in because they're connected to the objects themselves. And so if we only like localize the objects, the data and materials will still be linked, which oftentimes this is exactly what you want. So if we now just make this local, now all of this is localized, we can move it around, we cannot edit it, so you can't go into edit mode, but we can move it around, we can apply new materials, but you can see that the mesh data itself is still linked. And so this is where the power of objects versus data in Blender is really, really awesome because it makes it really easy to work with uh, basically imported or referenced objects and data from other scenes to keep things really easy to update and very easy to control. So that's how to link and append data. So the only difference between linking and appending is appending just doesn't bother to reference the data, it just brings it in and it's already local. Uh, linking then brings it in localized.